Repairing Air Bubbles in Resin Casts. One of the common problems that you'll encounter, especially if you're casting a lot of detailed resin parts, is air bubbles in your cast parts. Now there's a lot of ways to avoid air bubbles, but that's an entirely different video. Uh, sometimes air bubbles are just a fact of life with more complicated casts. So in this tutorial, we'll be covering two different methods for filling air bubbles or voids in casts. Now the part we're patching is a pretty simple Venus figurine, but I chose this because typically if you don't cast her under pressure, she typically winds up having an air bubble under her chin. Now this is by no means a comprehensive uh, resin casting video, so be sure to check out the links in the video description. I'll put uh, some resources there for more in-depth uh, resin casting videos and mold making videos. And this particular video was actually born out of a request on our Instagram page. We had a lot of customers that saw the post we did about uh, asking about air bubbles and how to fill them. And after we made our post, a lot of people said that really needs to be a video. So here's the video. And those of you who don't follow us on Instagram, be sure to check us out. Our handle is at Biddy Mold Supply. Now the two methods we'll be showing for patching air bubbles and filling voids are using baking soda and super glue and water weld putty. And the baking soda and super glue method is typically for smaller air bubbles, whereas the water weld putty is better for uh, filling in larger voids or even re-sculpting areas that didn't come out quite right on a finished cast part. Now first of all, the baking soda and super glue method. Now the baking soda is basically a filler material that uh, because of the air trapped in the baking soda, it allows it to create a little matrix along with the super glue. So what we're going to do is by using an eyedropper, we can actually grab very small amounts of baking soda and dispense that into an air bubble or a small void. And then once we've got that uh, filled with baking soda, we can then scrape off any excess and then use a little drop of super glue. And what happens is the super glue already sets really fast, but it sets even faster under these conditions because it soaks into that absorbent material and sets almost almost instantly to a hard plastic-like material. And uh, then because it's made of glue, it bonds to the surrounding resin really well. And also can be sanded and painted on the finished part. Now, this is kind of a tricky video to film because uh, a lot of this is a very fine details and there's only so much of that that really reads well on a camera. So uh, some of this I had to do a little bigger than I really needed to just so you can see what's going on here. But essentially, again, what we're doing is grabbing a little bit of baking soda with a, a an eyedropper and then putting that into that bubble and here's a cutaway so you can kind of see how that works so you're using an eyedropper to put a small amount of that baking soda into that area and you scrape that off even so you basically have a little pocket full of baking soda and once you've got that filled to your liking, and if you need to, you can actually do this in stages, but then you come back on top of that with a drop of super glue. The smaller, the better, because what it'll, what it'll do is actually absorb down into the baking soda and it'll be soaked into that baking soda. And then again, it'll set almost instantly. Now back to our EasyFlow 90 resin cast. So here's our little air bubble and we're gonna put a little bit of baking soda in that. And you're always gonna be using a little bit more than you actually need to fill that void because you don't wanna have it fill up short. You wanna fill it, overfill it a little bit and then scrape it off either with the tip of your finger or with an X-Acto knife if it's a straight edge or a straight surface. And once you've done that, then the next step is pretty simple. Just go back with some super glue. And again, the smaller the drop, the better. In fact, if you get uh, some of the higher end super glue bottles have that little, almost like a little needle that you can use to dispense it. And that really helps direct that uh, super glue exactly where you need it to be. And then the nice thing about this is uh, once that sets up and it does so almost instantly, it can be sanded and painted just like the surrounding plastic. So there you have the basic super glue and baking soda method, and now on to the putty method. Here we're using a uh, the water weld putty to fill a bigger void. This is better for larger air bubbles and areas where you might actually have to reconstruct a small area of the sculpture.
And for that, we're using this water weld putty that the nice thing about this is you can find it at most hardware stores in the adhesive section. This is typically intended for porcelain sink repair. And it's a nice, strong, uh, fast setting epoxy putty. And the way it works is you take this out of the package and you slice off a section of it. It's about the size of a roll of quarters. And you just take that out, uh, slice off a, a cross section of that, and you need it to activate it. Make sure you wear gloves and need that just like uh, it feels almost like a firm uh, water-based modeling clay. And once you need it, you have about five minutes to work with it before it starts to set up. Now, one of the attributes of the water weld putty, since this is an epoxy putty, you can actually use water to smooth it out. So uh, use water on your fingertips if you're trying to keep it from sticking to your hands. And you can also use a little bit of water on your tools to keep it from sticking to your tools. And also use uh, water-soaked uh, sponges to texture it if necessary. But here I'm just taking a little, uh, a little dab of it and using a dental spatula to press that into those air bubble areas. And and in some cases, you'll find that it helps to use an X-Acto to open up those uh, air bubbles a little bit larger to really make sure that that putty gets into those air bubbles properly. And once you've got that in place, you can use, uh, again, use some water to smooth it out or to texture it a little bit. Now, personally, because of that fast working time, I would just do a minimal amount of texturing and uh, smoothing it out and then let it set up completely and do the rest of the work with the Dremel tool. And just like the baking soda and super glue method, once this cures completely, it's going to behave just like the cast resin part. You can sand it, you can drill, dremel on it, and uh, of course you can paint it, provided you haven't used any kind of oils on the surface. And there you have the basic process of filling in air bubbles and voids. And be sure to check out the links in the video description. I'll put links to both the products we use and also some video resources on our website that'll help you with more resin casting uh, scenarios like basic resin casting and of course mold making. So thanks again for watching and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and of course check us out on Instagram. Our handle there is at Biddy Mold Supply.